Hi, I'm Christine. And I'm Emma. In 2016, we launched the No Justice Project in partnership with Drake University's Middleton Center for Children's Rights. It has since then become an annual art exhibit highlighting our youth artists. This project aimed to show youth in our judicial system and youth who are refugees, immigrants, or first-generation Americans that their future is hopeful and their life experiences and voices matter. No Justice gave youth the tools and opportunity to learn about their personal rights, contemplate their own participation in the justice system, and provided a healthy way to respond creatively through art. Using art to elevate the voices of young people living on the margins, the No Justice Project engaged the public in a discourse around system disproportionality and social injustices these youth face. Due to the pandemic in 2020, we paused our No Justice series and came back strong with our first virtual exhibit, No Justice, No Change, in 2021. No Justice is here to remind you that although we are all in this together, not all of us are on the same boat. The theme of change is broad and youth encourage each other to approach their art making from a place of personal authenticity. Some definitions our youth have used to talk about change are, change is like spring, it sprouts and blooms. Another one says, change is a part of life. It's great, it sucks. We don't get anything easily. Let's take time, practice, get better, another one says. That's what change means to youth artists in your community. Can you think of a year when we had to do more adapting and changing? Can you think of a year when you were more worried about the future? Our Force Iowa will always seek to elevate and center the voices of youth who have been and continue to be marginalized and minoritized by systems of oppression. We hope that you will take the time to see what change means to these important youth artists and that you will be a part of the collective change necessary for everyone to flourish. We have asked former youth artists to join us in reflecting on what this experience meant to them. Here's what some former youth artists have to say. Well, I definitely feel like no change was definitely no change. It was definitely something that everyone felt in different, oh, different moments in different ways. I definitely feel like that year changed a lot for a lot of people trying to figure out what will life look like after COVID because during COVID it was really hard to picture what will life be without a mask and social distancing and jobs and money situations like I feel like it was definitely a lot of challenges that kind of happened so quickly and swiftly within a short amount of time. Being at Art Force during the pandemic was to me it was safe and not just in the physical sense of being safe from COVID but it was safe as in emotionally our force provided a very safe space not just for me but for everyone I feel that comes to Art Force. I feel like it was important to do the virtual videos and the art lesson is because it showed that nothing's really stopping the mission. Yes, there is a pandemic and yes, there's COVID and yes, there's fears, but we are still standing and we're still here trying to offer you these resources. So I definitely feel like it showed how much these these kids meant to us because even through all the stuff, it would have been easy to stop but instead of stopping, we pushed harder. It was a lot of trying to build personal connections through the camera lens. It was moments where hopefully people will show up, hopefully someone will reach out. It was a lot of just trial and error and trying to figure out what's next. And also trying to keep students engaged. I feel like it was a little challenging only because when life happens, it happens and you can't really talk to that person in, pers in person. So you have to send a text message or call them and just hope that like they understand that you're there for them, even though it is virtually. I mean, it was new for me, just as it was new for everyone else. Um, but I think, you know, we made it work really well. You know, just trying to introduce, like this is our new norm now, but you know, the love is still there and the relationships and the community building is still there. And I think that was really beautiful that we were able to make it work. 
going virtual. A memorable moment would be being in workshop together, virtually just being there, working on their own projects, working on the piece that was going to go into the exhibit, just kind of being there together, um, whether we're talking about the project or talking about you know, whatever else is going on in our lives while working on the projects. I think just being together, because there is like a designated time each week to specifically work on the project. That was very memorable to just kind of be there together, just to sit in that space and make art. My impression as a mentor of the exhibit, No Change, um, I feel like it was definitely impactful. I feel like it was impactful because it gave students and kids and also mentors an opportunity to figure out how they can put their artwork out there without actually having that one-on-one -on -one person interaction. It definitely was a lot of isolation and solo and moments to yourself but it was nice to see how so many people separately were able to put together a show as one. My experience living up, up to the exhibit was I feel like it was emotional and fun all at the same time. There was a lot of crying and laughing, just a lot of relationship building with the team and with our youth and our community members. I think there was a lot of learning and unlearning and getting creative with one another, bouncing off ideas. And yeah, I think emotional and fun was my experience. The three pieces, there was one that was inspired by my grandparents. It was old family photos cut out um, and it was using mixed medium of glass and photos and newspaper clippings and wood. Um, and it was basically just trying to work through my feelings and emotions of trying to figure out what was life like as being isolated. Um, because during that time, it was trying to figure out work and trying to figure out life and try to figure out bills. Uh, so it was mostly me trying to support their inner kid um, and work through it as an adult. One piece uh, was kind of a vision board of different type of Black influencers that I felt gave me strength at that time. The final uh, collage piece of me just experimenting with what a new art form looked like with me because it was when I was transitioning from watercolor and acrylic and oil and actually working with something that was more manageable just as cutting paper because it was soothing to me. Yezhong, we are first gen and we are covering a song by Sifu Tsape in memory of Hmong people and we hope you enjoy. So in 2021, it was my first No Justice exhibit with Art Force Iowa, um, and the theme was No Justice, No Change. So me and two of my closest friends, Lisa and Brandon, we formed a band called First Gen, since um, Lisa and Brandon are both first generation American, and my dad was an immigrant um, and refugee from Southeast Asia. And the song we performed was Na, Na Sa Mong. It was by Sifu Sape, so Pastor Sape. He is a Hmong pastor that does a lot of music, um, and he writes a lot of songs, not just Christian songs, but also songs that are relevant to the Hmong community. The song was about remembering where the Hmong people come from, and it talks about the changes that Hmong people had to, had to endure when they immigrated or came over here as refugees after the Secret War slash Vietnam War. So a lot of the lyrics in the songs are like, I remember this as a kid, I remember like the house, 
um, that I grew up in. But now my kids are playing on like the internet with TV and, and, cell, and cell phones now. It really sits with me. And it's one of my like all time favorite Hmong songs too, just because it makes me think of like my grandparents a lot and how like when they came over here and they were like, oh my gosh, we don't know a single word of English and like everything's so different. Like the techn technological advances are so different too back um, from when they were in Laos in the refugee camp in Thailand. Hearing through music, like the different changes that they had to go through like every single day was really like eye-opening and made me appreciate the song and my grandparents more. Um, and I think in our group statement, we kind of talked about that too and how we're really thankful that they were able to come over here. We're really like thankful for like the changes that they had to make to make sure that their family was going to have a better future. Performing virtually was really interesting because like I never really performed in front of cameras before. I usually perform in front of like uh, my church congregation or my family and my friends. I think we did two takes. The first take, I'm pretty sure I messed up the first take, but the second take went amazing. I think everyone like like really enjoyed the second take and we didn't have to do another look back or anything. It was like filming my first ever music video, so it was nice to have that experience. <laughs> For 2021 No Justice, it was no change. The piece I did was um, to show like resistance. I'm Karen and our families are from Myanmar and we're like in one of the states um, out of many states. And after 1949, war like a civil war has begun in Myanmar. It's been ongoing for 70 years for a lot of ethnic groups. They don't have that type of like uh, military power. They don't have the type of salary that the Burmese official might have. So I feel like it's very important for people to understand where we're coming from. Like we just want peace, like want to end the war, but like I feel like it's very hard. February 1st, 2021 was when the Burmese military started a coup against the state. One of the signs I did in the video was this. The hand sign is how a lot of the civilians use as a form of resistance. The music video in the facts in Karen and it's saying that we want our freedom, um, like how will we get it? The pictures that I have used in the backgrounds are just me um, growing up and what's happening in the States because my parents, like my grandparents have suffered through the military like regime. We just want like the war to stop so everyone can like, you know, live in peace instead of having to suffer like having to go through displacement and have nowhere else to go. I also put something on my face, which is Kothanaka and is used a lot in Burma. And it's basically a form of like sunscreen, but you can also use it, like a lot of people use it as like makeup. I, but um, it's just like something that will cool, cool your face. Um, throughout the summer because it's really hot there and if you don't want sunburn you can get it and I use that and put like two stripe on my face just to represent something that like is common throughout um, Myanmar. I wanted to use that video because I feel like um, I wanted to make a change and show that like we are resisting against the military coup I feel like it was only a few months in when No Justice happened, so that's why I um, created that video.
อ๋อเนาะตะนี้อีดิเปแฮปาพลาดอดาเลอ๋อเวราปะดีมวยคาเปตเอเมญายปะตามึนลาออเลอดิดออ๋อเปแฮดอปาพลาดอกีตาดิ
own shadow I know that I lie in it Let it rule my mind from time to time Escaping an old battle Hangs on like a vine to me And whispers dirty lies in my ear And I know we didn't start this fight And I won't let it rule my heart tonight I can change, I can change I can still change I can still change No change was very reflective you know, being during the pandemic, and it was a big change for everyone, you know, transitioning into the pandemic and what that new world looks like for us in order to be creative. So that was really the biggest thing, is trying to keep that momentum of, all right, you know, this is going to be an amazing exhibit, you know, people are going to love it, people are going to see it, and trying to really keep that fun up while also having that background of the pandemic. Since 2016, Art Force Iowa has hosted a No Justice exhibit every year, except 2020 due to the pandemic. Each year had a different theme, giving youth artists opportunities to explore, reflect, and create in response to the theme. As the series comes to an end, we want to honor where we have been, where we are, and where we are going. Every month leading up to our final exhibit, No Justice Legacies, we will be releasing a small documentary like this to celebrate the legacy of this series. We invite you to be a part of this exhibit by sharing your story with us. If you are a creator, we want you to submit your story today. If you're not a creator, we're here to help. At Art Force Iowa, we believe we are the stories our community collects, and we want to honor our collective heritage together. For more information, go to kjlegacy.org to find out how you can be a part of our legacy. Share your story today.